We must do a thing on Arrakis never before attempted for an entire planet, his father said. We must use man as a constructive ecological force, inserting adapted terraform life, a plant here, an animal there, a man in that place, to transform the water cycle to build a new kind of landscape. Frank Herbert's Dune Saga presents an intersection of multiple clandestine agendas, from the Sisterhood of the Bene Gesserit to the Warring Houses of Atreides and Harkonnen, all the way to the Imperial Throne itself. Everyone has their secrets, their own plans within plans. The Fremen of Arrakis are no exception. Long before the events of Dune, a secret plot was devised to reshape the face of Arrakis an action that would see the universe itself transformed. In this video, I'd like to discuss the secret mission of the Fremen and the mastermind who set them on their path to become a great ecological force. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Frank Herbert's Dune. A stranger to the desert world of Arrakis would no doubt be immediately struck by its barren wilderness the endless desert sea of nothing but spice, sandstorms, and giant sandworms. The pressure of thirst is a constant companion, the moon is your friend, and the sun your enemy. But one stranger came to Arrakis and saw not a wasteland, but a machine that could be calibrated to suit man's needs. Pardo Kynes, the first planetary ecologist of Arrakis, sent by the Padishah Emperor to study the world upon which their civilization depended. In examining the mysteries of this seemingly humble planet, Kynes discovered that a complete ecological transformation was possible. This was a barren wasteland where the local populace was forced to wear specialized suits to recycle their body's own moisture to survive. Kynes saw a means to transform this environment into a green, lush world where no one would want for water again. To accomplish such an extraordinary feat would require extraordinary people spearheading this ecological movement. The local Fremen were the tool that would change the face of Arrakis. Kynes was direct and single-minded. His plan was to evade the oversight of House Harkonnen who governed Arrakis, and marry a Fremen woman who would bear him a son. Beginning with his son and the other Fremen children, he would teach them ecological literacy, knowledge that would enable them to manipulate the entire landscape. Convincing the Fremen to accept this mission would not be an easy task. An opportunity came after Kynes had intervened to aid several Fremen youths that were being hunted down by Harkonnen soldiers. After this intervention, the young Fremen owed Kynes a mortal obligation and brought him to their siege where Pardo spoke of paradise, about an abundance of water, dunes anchored by grass, about palmeries filled with date palms, about open canots flowing across the desert. At first, the Fremen thought him to be a madman who knew too much of their ways and their closely guarded secrets. He had seen their sacred Chris knives and knew the location of a major siege. Because of this, they decided to kill this outsider. However, as his executioner, Uliet, approached, Kine simply said, remove yourself, and continued on with his lecture. No one could fathom what was going through the mind of his would-be executioner, but upon hearing Kine's words, Uliet deliberately fell upon his own knife, effectively removing himself as Kynes had instructed. His actions were taken as an omen that Shai Hulud had moved him. Thereafter, the Fremen hailed Kynes as a prophet, a man that was just mad enough to be holy, and so they began their secret mission, as directed by the planetologist, to change their world. Kynes initially estimated 300 to 500 years for the terraforming of Arrakis to be complete. This would not happen in their lifetime, the lifetime of their children or their grandchildren's children, but it would come, and somehow, the disappointment of its delay made the prospect of paradise even more real to the Fremen. Though that day was farther off than they had anticipated, they knew that eventually, their blessed day would come. The Fremen had proven themselves to be an ecological and geological force of almost unlimited potential. Molded by the dangerous environment of Arrakis and hostile occupying regimes, they were forced to become masters at survival, deception, and stealth. The Fremen maintained secrecy in many aspects of their society, 
from their customs, sacred rituals, and weaponry, to their battle tactics and population size. While carrying out his imperial duties, managing the biological testing stations, Kynes oversaw the infiltration by Fremen personnel who began using station tools to dig underground catch basins and to construct hidden wind traps to gather and store water. In an effort to maintain secrecy and ensure no one in the Empire could spy on their activities, the Fremen bribed the Spacing Guild with Spice to keep the skies of Arrakis free from satellites. In order to terraform the planet, Kynes and the Fremen needed to know everything about the ecosystem they intended to change. Much of their early efforts were spent collecting and analyzing copious amounts of data. Moisture to sustain plant and animal life was a significant obstacle. A persistent mystery on Arrakis was the seemingly unexplained disappearance of water. Whenever a well would be dug in the sinks and basins, they would initially produce trickles of water that quickly vanished, as if something plugged it up. One day after his ornithopter had been blown off course by a storm, Pardo made the remarkable discovery of large salt flats, indicating there were once lakes and oceans on Arrakis. This planet had already been terraformed to suit another life form. Not long after this discovery did Kynes and the Fremen find the water stealer. Leathery and resembling a leech, the sand trout were found to be the larval form of the giant sandworms. The activity of the sand trout is why they are called water stealers. Water is poisonous to sandworms, so in their larval form, the sand trout paved the way for their next phase of life by sequestering any moisture to the depths below. The life cycle of the sandworm was also proven to be the origin for the most precious resource in the universe, spice. As the Fremen continued their work to gather water, they made sure their underground reservoirs were walled and shielded from the sand trout, stocking them with predator fish that would attack any that managed to invade it. Kynes oversaw the introduction of various animals, insects, and plant life, including hundreds of different food plants. Everything had been calculated with precision. If they could get 3% of the green plant element on Arrakis involved in forming carbon compounds, they'd have their self-sustaining cycle, their new ecosystem fit for human life. A homeworld with grass and trees, lakes and oceans. There would be no need for stillsuits to recycle and preserve one's moisture. No one would feel thirst ever again. Eventually, Kynes married a Fremen woman who bore him a son, to whom he passed on all his knowledge. Pardo was killed in a cave-in when his son Liette, a full Fremen, was 19 years old. The rigid class structure saw to it that Liette received his father's imperial position. By this time, the Fremen had already been set upon their path, building, planting, digging, and training their children. Liette Kynes had only to watch, nudge, and spy upon the Harkonnens. However, Kynes and the Fremen forgot that the highest function of ecology is the understanding of consequences. The Fremen's entire cultural identity had been based on their own survival, their reverence for the sandworms that they believed were the physical manifestation of God. The Fremen thought they could have both open sources of water with abundant plant life while also maintaining a deep desert region for the sandworms to inhabit as they continue to make spice. In the end, the Fremen turned out to be cogs in a machine, unable to comprehend the far-reaching effects of their hidden agenda. Their efforts to bring about paradise would ultimately lead to a tremendous reduction in the population of sandworms, along with the spice they produced. This, of course, would cause disastrous tidal waves of ripple effects throughout the Imperium, which had until then made itself entirely too reliant on the singular commodity of spice. A core theme in Frank Herbert's series is a warning against humanity's tendency to act before fully understanding the consequences. The long-term effects of the terraforming efforts of the Fremen would not be fully understood until their secret agenda was passed on to the hands of Pardo Kynes great-grandson, Leto Atreides II. As the God Emperor, he would use his knowledge of the best-kept secrets of the Fremen as a tool to guide the Imperium along a terrible, yet necessary, golden path to ultimately ensure the survival of the human race. But I'm curious to know what do you think about Pardo Kynes and the terraforming efforts of the Fremen? 
Are there any lessons to be learned from the manner in which they were set on their path? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.